Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be reading you all some books about autism awareness. So um, let's start out with autism. Um, I'm not sure if we've talked about this before. We might have when we had our uh, story time and our readings for Disability Awareness Month. Um, but we'll still have autism as a vocab word just in case you've forgotten, or if we didn't cover it. All right, let's start here. So autism is a thing that some people have, um, both adults and children can have it, and nobody really knows what causes it. And it's not something that you can, um, like, catch or give to someone, right? It's something that you're just born with. And it's not something that needs to be cured or um, is something that's wrong with anyone. It just means that people are different in a few different ways. So people with autism might um, speak less, right? And they might instead decide to communicate differently. We'll talk about communication a little bit later today. Um, they might be talk a little different or they might be interested in certain things like a whole bunch. Um, and there's nothing wrong with people who have autism um, and it shows up differently in different people. So someone might have uh, talk, uh, a way that you consider regular or a way that you're used to hearing. And someone with aut another person with autism might not talk at all, or they might talk, but they talk a little different or they talk, you know, all different kinds of ways. So the first book we're going to read is called, My Friend Has Autism. All right. <clears throat> my name is Nick. This is my friend Zach. Zach and I belong to a model airplane club. Zach has autism. Okay. A model airplane club. All right. Let's see. So those are little like, those are kind of like little toys of airplanes, but sometimes with model airplanes, you like have to put them together. Pull them together. Airplanes are awesome. Zach likes building bi wing planes. Fighter jets are my favorite. All right. So, let's look here at um, our next word is biplane. So, a biplane is a plane like this. It has two wings or two sets of wings, right? So it has like wings down here and then it has wings up here too. And these are, uh, they used to make a lot of old planes like this. I think some, they still have some that they're made like this. Um, the ones made like this today are usually used to, I think they still use some biplanes to, uh, as like crop dusters, if you know what those are you seen like little airplanes flying and uh, spraying things down when you're on the highway or something and you see someone's farm has one a small little plane going around. Um, so yeah, they used to have two sets of wings like bicycle has two wheels, biplane has or bi wing plane has two two wing things. So I guess it's kind of like four wings because they have or three here at least, one, two, three, but it's two sets, so one, two, All right? Here we go, on to our next page. Set. All right, let's get back here. Zach knows a lot about airplanes. His nickname is Pilot. Ah. Pilots usually fly airplanes, so it makes sense. 
I've learned more about airplanes from Zach than anybody else. Oh, looks like Zach is quite an expert. So Zach, um, as we talked a little bit about earlier, sometimes people with autism have special interests. Um, sometimes they're called, you might hear the word hyperfixation used, um, but it just means that they're really into a certain thing. Um, like Zach here is really interested in planes. Sometimes Zach goes on and on about airplanes. He repeats the same facts over and over sometimes. It can seem like he's in his own little word. Um, and it says here, did you know sometimes kids with autism have some trouble communicating? They may not talk much at all. They may talk only about their special interests or hyperfixations, even when other people don't share those interests. Which, um, you know, sometimes it's, if you're some part of being a good friend, oh my gosh, I'm having trouble talking now. Um, part of being a good friend is listening to things that your friends are interested about. And we'll talk a little bit about um, finding a balance in friendship with listening and talking a little bit later. All right. When Zach fo is focused on his models, he may not talk to me at all. We work our own on our own planes quietly, or I'll tell him about my day. I can tell Zach anything. Hmm. See, so Zach talks a lot sometimes to um, him about airplanes, and sometimes he just talks about his day to Zach. Zach and I play video games while we wait for the glue to dry. He's tough to beat. Sometimes I think he lets me win. Mm. Yeah, my sister used to beat me a lot in Mario Kart. <laughs> do you have a, Do you have any friends who are a lot better at like a game than you are? Yeah, or are you the one who's always beating them? Yeah. All right, Zach hears things most people don't notice. Loud noises can hurt his ears. On our field trips to the airport, he wore the coolest earmuffs ever. He looked like he worked there. Oh, he does kind of look like a, like a pilot. It's kind of hard to see his earmuffs. Right? Okay. And then said, did you know many kids with autism may hear sounds or smell odors that other people don't notice? I wrestle with some of my other friends, but not with Zach. He feels things differently than most people. Zach doesn't like anybody touching him, not even to pin his brand new wings. Oh, cool. Or a pin with wings on it. Even to pin on his brand new wings. And that's okay. Yeah. So I think that you've probably met people um, before who have not wanted you to like touch them or something. And that's something that you need to be, um, you need to be careful with because some people don't like to be touched certain ways. Some people, you know, sometimes you don't want to hug. Sometimes you just don't want to hug. And some people don't really like hugs and that's okay. I really don't like being tickled, right? So um, I tell my friends that, right? And they say, you know, okay, because we're your, we're your friends and we, Give you respect, right? You don't want to be tickled, so we won't tickle you. And it's important to listen to people when they say that they don't like it when you do something, right? Because that's being a good friend. There are lots of things I don't like too. Yeah, I don't like a lot of things too. When I go to Zach's house, I bring my own models. It bothers Zach when other people touch or play with his models. Each plane has to be in just the right spot. Yeah. So it says here, did you know some kids with autism spend a lot of time rearranging toys or objects? It can upset them when someone moves their things. And it's upset me when people have moved my things, right? Sometimes you have something, 
a very certain way and someone moves it and then it kind of you can mess it up or something you know or it's hard to get back to it to the way it was so it's just important to make sure you're being respectful of other people's things Jack may not look at me when I'm talking to him. Sometimes he walks away. Um, so that's something that some people do is they look at people in the eye when they're talking to them. But other people don't really do that. Um, I know some autistic people who have trouble sometimes talking to people because their eyes move back and forth and stuff. And so people think that they're being rude when they can't really help that their eyes are moving all around. And some people in different countries or different cultures, right? Like we talked about are people in Asia, in China, in West Africa, in Ireland, I think we did last week, right? Um, some people in some cultures think that it uh, think that looking people in the eyes is actually rude. So it's important to think about all the different ways that um, to make sure that you're communicating. And sometimes when you think someone's being rude, they might not actually be being rude, or they may not think that they're being rude. Um, and you know, it's important to be kind to anyone, regardless. Um, anyways no matter what. I know Zach doesn't mean to hurt my feelings. I just show him my new magazine. Some, I'll just show him my new magazine some other time. Oh, so he wanted to show him his magazine, but Zach wanted to go do something else, which is okay. He shows him his magazine later. I'm really glad I met Zach. Of all my friends, Zach is the only one who likes model airplanes. It makes me good, feel good to be his friend. It's nice to have friends that you have common interests with, you know, like I mean, my friend really likes superheroes or you might have another friend who also likes swimming or model airplanes. All right. So I think the next book we're going to read is called Different Like Being. And I'm going to double check because this is a very long book um, each page is its own little story. So I have the page numbers written down for what I want to talk, which ones we want to do. So we'll do page six. And And, oh, oops, looks like the book hit the space bar, so it unpaused a little early. Hope that didn't mess anything up. All right, so this is Albert Einstein. And he's playing a little instrument there called the violin. Albert Einstein was not a boy genius, at least not as far as anyone knew. Most people thought that he wasn't very smart. He didn't talk at all until, the eight, until he was three years old, and people uh, and still didn't speak well when he reached the age of nine. About the only thing he was good at was playing the violin. Albert didn't do well in school and his teachers were often irritated with him. One school even threw him out. They thought he was hopeless. They were wrong. There was something going on inside Albert's head, something wonderful. The first time Albert saw a compass when he was around the age of five, he was fascinated. What made the needle move? How did it know which way to point? These questions, along with the love of math, would eventually lead young Albert to, to the science of physics. Right here. Um, 
this is a compass here, right? And if you move it, um, yeah, let's see. So you can try moving it, right? And the little needle moves the opposite way that you turn it, that is always pointing, the red part is always going to point. If you set it down, it will always point the same way. So I can turn the whole thing around. has to be on flat, on flat ground. Yeah. All right, well, it's kind of hard to show here, but it always points towards the north. So it helps you find your way if you get lost. Okay. Um, so after college, Albert took a job in a patent office. That's the place where People go if they have an invention. Um, he never stopped thinking about physics though and began to write his ideas about time and space. Then in 1905, he published a paper that shook the world. When people read what he wrote, they were amazed. Some thought it was hard to understand. He predicted that time could slow as you approached the speed of light and that space could be pulled out of shape. He even showed that anything, a jelly bean, a lump of metal, a drop of water, held immense energy inside of it. His ideas took years for other scientists to prove, but one thing was always certain. Einstein's work would change everything. Al Albert became famous. He traveled all over, lecturing and teaching, even at college, even at the college where he had been a poor student. Some of Albert's ideas were used to build the atomic bomb, the busy the biggest weapon ever made. This made Albert sad because he was a pacifist, someone who is against war. He spent the rest of his life trying to convince other countries not to use the bomb. For this reason, he is not just remembered as a great scientist, but also a great person. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and then do you know what it means if someone is called an Einstein? Einstein means like that they're a genius or that they're very smart, which is cool because even though he didn't do very well in school, he ended up doing a lot of other things um, that uh, he needed to be very smart to do. So, all right, I also wanted to do page 42, a different sort of one on here. Hans Christian Andersen. Hans Christian Andersen didn't fit in his hometown. So when he was just 14, he set off for the big um, town of Copenhagen. It was a long walk, but Hans was excited. Soon he would be in a new place where nobody knew him. Hans could start a brand new life. Unfortunately, life in Copenhagen wasn't much better than it had been at home. He tried to find work, but didn't have any luck. So instead he started school didn't fit in either. The other boys teased him for being tall and awkward. They hurt his feelings. Even the teachers weren't very nice. Hans was sad, but he cheered himself up by writing stories. He wrote wonderful tales about mermaids and princes. In the 1830s, books were written in a formal style using lots of long words, but Hans wrote simply the way people really spoke. This was new to readers. His stories became very popular, both with kids and adults. As Hans became famous, he started getting invitations to dances and dinner parties. Hans was pleased, but worried too. The people at these parties would be smart people, cool people, fancy people. How would he ever fit in? Despite his fears, Hans went to the parties. Slowly he began to realize his new friends didn't want him to fit in. They didn't invite Hans because he was like everyone else. They invited him because he was different. They invited him because he was interesting. They invited him because he was Hans. Hans wrote, wrote about lots of different things, but one of his best love stories is about being different. The Ugly Duckling, and I think you might know that book or that story at least, tells the story of a young duck who doesn't look or sound like everybody, like everybody else. Just like Hans, 
he leaves home looking for someone to belong. And just like Hans, he gets some bumps and bruises along the way. In the end though, the ugly duckling discovers he's not ugly. He's not even a duckling. He's the beautiful swan. It took Hans a while, but he finally realized that just because he was different didn't mean there was something wrong with him. Hans had been a swan all along. So when baby geese are born, they look kind of awkward sometimes. They're, they're kind of tall and they're gray. And if you were looking for a duck, you'd say, something's weird with that duck. Why is it so tall and gray? But um, it's actually because, but you're not, uh, but if you're looking for a baby swan, then you're like, oh, that's a regular baby swan there, right? So it all kind of depends on how you look at things. Hans Christian Andersen stories have been read all over the world and inspired everything from paintings to songs to movies. That sad 14 year old boy long ago may have secretly hoped that he and his stories would be someday be famous, but in his wildest dreams, he could not have guessed that a statue of one of his characters would watch over the harbor of the city. He loved it. In fact, the Little Mermaid is the symbol of Copenhagen, the city where Hans feared he would never fit in. Oh, so he came up with the Little Mermaid. I like the Little Mermaid. Yeah, I know I've had a lot of, we've had a lot of story times that I've done where there have been mermaids. Uh, that's kind of just because I like mermaids. All right, so we have one last book and then we will begin with our craft or end with our craft, right? Because we've already done here. This one's called A Friend for Henry. In classroom six, second left down the hall, Henry was looking for a friend. Hmm. It couldn't be Gilly who circled her fishbowl. She's quiet, thought Henry, but she can't play on the swings. It couldn't be Mrs. Magoon who knew about hugs. She shares, thought Henry, but she has to. Could it be someone else in classroom six? What do you think? I think you can find a friend somewhere here. In art class, Vivian shared Henry's double easel. Vivian was a kaleidoscope, a tangle of colors. She had ribbons and clackety shoes. She knew every pony song. Her fingernails were painted like rainbows. Oh, that's very pretty. When I got paint on, when I get paint on my fingers, Henry said, I wash it off. Vivian waved her hands too close to Henry's face. My mommy painted them. Aren't they pretty? Hmm. Henry looks kind of upset. He doesn't really want the fingers that close to his face. Painting on people is against the rules, said Henry. Did your mommy get in trouble? No. Henry lowered his voice. Did you get angry? Why should I? But Vivian was angry later. He ruined them. She likes rainbows, Henry explained. And he thought a friend would say thank you. Oh, so he tried to make her happy by painting rainbows on her shoes, which is a nice idea, but uh, sometimes paint doesn't go very well on shoes, right? I think you need a special kind of paint with sometimes marker in order for it not to get them all wet and soggy. Um, so he tried to do something nice, but kind of caused a bit of, it made her a little upset. Reading time was Henry's favorite. My friend will like it too. It was Henry's turn to put out the carpet squares. He tucked the blue ones next to the brown ones, green in the very middle. All the edges met and the corners fit perfectly. Reading time, shouted Sam, my favorite. Sam was a, Samuel was a thunderstorm, booming and crashing. He was kind of scary if you didn't have your blanket. He could pick up crayons with his toes and do proper somersaults. Henry stepped in front of Samuel. Somersaults are hard, Samuel dodged past. I want a green one. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes people can be a little loud and that can be a little scary. Um, and as we talked about earlier, Sometimes autistic people um, are able to hear some things a lot louder. So that's be especially hard for Henry here. Wait, Henry's 
throat throat tight. They're perfect. Mine's a magic carpet from a genie's lamp, said Samuel. It's not, Henry's face was hot. It's from Rug World. There's the sticker. Up, up and away, magic carpet. <clears throat> hmm. It looks like Samuel kind of wants to play pretend, but Henry doesn't really understand why he's doing that. It can be kind of frustrating. Booming and crashing, Henry's fingers curled closed. A friend listens. Hmm. Looks like he's pretty upset. Henry, Mrs. Magoon, knelt in front of him. Sit with me, please. Henry did, but he couldn't see the pictures, and his carpet square was brown. During snack time, Jaden took two crack took three crackers instead of two. At recess, Riley dug up worms and let them use the swings. Yeah. So sometimes it looks like Henry gets bothered when people don't follow certain rules, which is something um, I used to get very upset at. Uh, I remember when I was a little kid, I went swimming, right, and they had swimming classes and I would yell at all of the other kids because I'd be like you guys are splashing too loud and it's gonna get in people's eyes right um but they just sort of splashed around anyways um so it can be kind of irritating or overwhelming for some people when people break small rules you know um or don't do things exactly the way um that people think they ought to be done. But it's important to remember um, that we need to be kind to people and nice to people any way that they are. At free time, Henry's hope for a little friend felt small. He watched the sunlight play along Gilly's scales. He could watch Gilly for a long time. Katie watched too. Gilly's the little goldfish. Katie smelled like strawberry milk. She read storybooks all by herself. She slid down the big slide, sometimes backwards. The big slide is too big, said Henry. Gilly floated past. She's shimmery, said Katie, but she doesn't blink, said Henry. What did she do? She burps pebbles, Henry thought, and breathes underwater and turns sunshine into colors. Henry hunched into his sweatshirt. Fish things. Katie bent to have a closer look. I like her. Henry tried not to blink. Want to play blocks? Sure. All right. So it looks like he did find a friend after all. Katie, I don't like triangles, said Henry. I don't like broccoli, said Katie. Together they built a tower. It had rectangles, cylinders, and squares but no triangles or broccoli. Huh? Together, okay. So they made, they communicated, right? So we're going to go over something here called communication. Okay, this is it. So here we have oh, communication. So communication can be talking to people or it can be things other than talking to people that still say things, right? So writing might be a type of communication or here someone's communicating with fingers, right? So they're not saying anything, but this means one, two, three, four. And sometimes autistic people communicate in different ways that aren't speaking, maybe they aren't writing, um, maybe they communicate with their hands or through a different way. But it's the same thing. Um, and communication is important to have when you're, um, when you have relationships with other people, when you talk to other people, when you're with other people, right? So, um, when someone frowns, right? They might not be saying that they're not happy, but they're communicating. They're showing you that they're not happy because they're frowning. All right, um, onto our other ones. So 
earlier, we said autistic people might hear sounds louder, right? They might be more sensitive to certain sounds or things that are happening, right? So here, this pepper is really sensitive to spicy foods, right? Um, I'm fairly sensitive to spicy foods. So it means that they, that some people are able to eat them and it doesn't like feel, uh, they don't feel very much, but like I feel a lot, right? And some people feel things differently and that's called sense. And um, that means they can be sensitive to certain things, right? Like I, I don't hear very well. So loud things don't bother me as much because I can't hear them very well, but um, I can taste things uh, that are spicy very well. So it's hard for me to eat things that are really hot or spicy. And then this is the last one and this is called compromise. So um, we will actually get back to that one. There is one more page I, I wanted to read for that. So put that one in. Right. It's perfect, said Henry. Thank you, said Kitty. The next day they played on the swings. Katie went down the big slide. Henry waited at the bottom for his friend. So that's the last page I wanted to read. Sorry about that. Um let's Let's look at this last word. So this last word is compromise. So um, Henry thought is things, you know, the big slide is too big. So he doesn't have to go on the big slide, but he's still friends with Katie and he just waits at the bottom, right? And that's called compromise. Maybe you two don't have all the same things that you want to do. You can compromise. Um, on doing some of them. Maybe one of you gets to do one thing and the other person gets to do the other thing. Or um, maybe you both do something that you both like. Compromise means that you may not get the thing that you want the most, um, but both people get something that they do want. All right. With that, we can move on to our craft. I hope this recorded well. Um, bye everyone. I'll see you in uh, just a minute. Hello, everyone. All right, I'm back to do some of these crafts. So today we're going to be building some paper airplanes, just like we talked about model airplanes that um, Zach liked. So I'll take a piece of paper. And the first one we will do today is called the basic dart. So I'm gonna take the paper, and we will fold it in half like this. Then we will unfold it. Then fold the corners. So it looks like this. And then it says fold the top edges to the center. So what we're going to do, I think what they want us to do is to fold this. Like that, and we'll do the same on the other side. There we go. And we fold the paper plane in half. And then I think that might be it. Oh, and then fold these two back like this. Mine didn't end up as nice as it could have. Let's see here. Fold these back like this. And then Oh, that wasn't too bad. All right, let's try another one. Um, the next one we're going to do is 
let's do this one. Okay. So pick on a piece of paper. Fold it in half. All right. And said fold the top edge down just a little bit. We'll fold the top edge down a little. So it looks like this, right? So you fold that down a little. It says fold the top edge down again like this. So just lay it over itself like that. Okay, I think that's it. And then it says fold the top corners away the back line. Like this. And fold like this. Fold the point in half now. Towards you, and then we make it like this, and we fold these two down like this. Huh? And then it says fold, then fold the little sides. So in the end, we have something looking, we unfold this bit, and we have this. Hmm. That was pretty good. All right, we'll do one more, and then I will, I think I will have the link for these so that you can look at them and take more time if you want. So this one looks harder. Um, okay, let's try it. It says fold this um, Well, the diagonal it says like this. It says fold the long in edge about half an inch, it says. So to do it like about what? Oh. Get it angled to do like this much. Huh? Okay. It says then hold. Fold the paper in half. All right. Okay, let's just fold the paper in half. Let's do this. This, I think, right? Hmm. Maybe. So, if you want that, that. Yeah. Okay. This is right. It says fold the right side over as far as it will go. And then fold the right side over. As far as it will go, make a crease. Okay, so then we kind of fold it. We pinch a little down here. We're going to fold it like this. I think that's what they want us to do here. Fold the other side down. The opposite sides meet. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So we have it like this. Now fold one outer flap down. Create the first wing. Oh, okay. So we take these little flaps, we fold one of these down. And we fold this one down. That it's like this. I think that is our finished airplane. Yeah. Weird. It's kind of cool. Oh, that one didn't go very well. All right. Well, I will leave you all with this link so that you can try out some of the different um, airplanes. Oh, here we go. And then you can try some of those out. All right. Well, I think we will have a guest next week. If not then, then the week after. Um, but I think I should still see you for the craft. All right. Bye, everyone. Um.